Well, it's uh, a post bag. Uh, I haven't done one of these for a while, have I? I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, I've got some stuff that I sort of collected uh, for a little while and I thought I'd run through them quickly. Now, <laughs> it's not usually traditional to open these things beforehand, but that's what I've done. So I've already opened them because I got too excited. But we'll start with one of these. So I picked up this. This is described as a solar charger 2AA. Um, but it's massive, so it's this big thing. Let's get it out of the box, actually. Um, I don't remember how much this was, but I'll pop a link in the description. I think it's from AliExpress. Could be from eBay, I can't really recall now. But, oh, hello. Look, it's got a light on. Is that just because the solar panel's active? Yeah, it is. Okay, so that's telling you it's charging. We've got a bit of paper in here. I like the size of it. I thought, do you know what? If that actually does take a charge, then, um, it's definitely not waterproof. I think we can tell from the big gap here that it's not waterproof, but it will might be useful in a window and maybe I can shove an ESP8266 in or something like that. But I thought let's have a little look. And maybe we can separate those sides out. So what have we got here? So solar charger specifications, two AA batteries, uh, working voltage greater than or equal to four volts. Greater than or equal to four volts. Okay, I'm not quite sure what... So open circuit voltage, I see. So it's 4.68, 250 milliamps, apparently. Not sure that cell would kick out 250 milliamps, but we'll see. Okay, so let's have a look inside. It's got a little vent hole, nice bit of attention to detail. There's actually a circuit board in here. So we've got the ability for it to charge two AA or two AAA at the same time, potentially. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, does that easily come out? I'd screwed in. Have I got a screwdriver? I do. So a little look, shall we? Um, in fact, you can guys can come in a bit closer for this, can't you? There we go. So that's our little circuit board. They're a bit uh, hastily soldered on there, but I'm sure they work. Uh, we will be doing some sort of testing on it or play around with it at least at some point. Let's select the right screwdriver. This one should do it. And we'll just see what's on the other side of that board. I wouldn't imagine very much. A diode? I'd be surprised if they're doing anything fancy. Is that going to come out? Yep. So we've got... Let's uh, focus on that for you. Very hard to see, isn't it? So that says YX8018-0048. Now, I'm gonna guess that's just a diode package, except it can't be. Let me just go away and find out what that is. Well, um, fascinatingly, this is sort of described as a boost chip. Um, so it will, essentially it's a, boost the voltage up to double of what's coming in from the solar panel, which is curious because um, in the circuits I've seen this described being used, uh, it has an inductor on the board as well. I don't have one here, so I'm unsure of what it's doing. Um, it is driving that LED, so God, heaven knows really. Uh, I will have to draw out the circuit and see how this is connected when we play with it further. But um, there's a fair amount of space in the box. So uh, there's a lot, a lot to play around with there. I'm gonna put this back together and then carry on with other ones, but there's a lot of room in there. So I could easily get uh, an ESP8266 in there and have it in uh, sort of deep sleep mode. Yeah, well, it'll be an interesting one at least. Next up, um, we've got another e-ink display, yet another Waveshare one. Um, they seem to be pretty cheap on Amazon at the moment, and this is the tri-color one. Um, and I've sort of been waiting to pick this up while I got my head around just normal e-ink displays. So now that I've enjoyed using those, I've still got the really big one to play with, but um, I thought I'd pick up one of these small ones. Oh, if I can get it out. It's a very tight package that's popped in. There we go. So we've got, um, as came with the other display, we've got a nice cable uh, with these little female DuPont connectors on the end. And then this is 
Oh, look at that. This is the tiny little display. Now, interestingly, it's got a sort of a pinkish hue to the screen. I don't know whether that's normal, um, sort of like a bleed across, which looks rather red. So um, we'll play with this. I mean, I can, I've got code automatically to upload exactly the same dimensions that I had for my social media counter thing. So um, I'll be having a good time with this, I think. I might do uh, news alerts or something like that with it. So it'll be fun. Um, this was about, was it 20 pounds, I think? Um, I'll put a link in the description. It wasn't very expensive. It's well worth picking up. Right, I've got, now this is a weird one. So eMesh, this is a, a Wi-Fi enabled plug. Um, this is the cheapest one I could find on Amazon. And um, the reason I went for the cheapest one is because I've got some Sonoff devices that I can use with Amazon Alexa. I've got one of those Echo Dots in my house, which I, I really like. It's on, so <laughs> I'm talking too much about my bedroom really, because in the last video I did that too, but uh, I've got a, a bedside light, that little one where you tap and the light comes on. But next to that, I've got my little Amazon Alexa and I tell it to play music in the morning, um, all sorts really, ask it what the weather is, what, what time it is as well. Um, but I wanted to be able to get it to do other things in my house, like pop the kettle on for me um, or turn on a light. Uh, and so I picked one of these up. Now this is, it's pretty small. Um, we've got a little power button on the bottom there. That's to manually enable it, but also probably to do the Wi-Fi pairing. Um, this was eleven ninety nine uh, when I picked it up. Um, and I saw another one which was $9.99, but it looked absolute garbage. So this was the, the cheapest one that I could find, which looked reasonable with good reviews. So um, anything else in the box? Some instructions. So how do we use it? I'm not gonna demo it now. If, um, if I think it's useful, I will, um, I'll try it. But look, we've got uh, current ratings, 10 amps. That's fairly normal. Um, surprising for a plug that small, actually, uh, that it would do that. But um, that is fairly normal for these types of plugs. Uh, so yeah, the maximum rating is 10 amps. Uh, Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz. Got some operating temperatures, supports Alexa, Google Home, it seems. And we need to get and smart the Smart Life app, it seems. So yeah, we'll be looking at that in the future. It's really, it's very cheap and it has good reviews. So um, it sort of looks, can you see in there? Let's see if we can come in a bit closer. we go we've got um, some marks in there does that look like it's been used before to you sort of does to me um, this is brand new oh well I'm not worried so yeah that should be a, a fun one um, but we'll leave it for another time uh, next up this one is it's kind of exciting because uh, I had a bit of trouble the other day with a little bit of a lazy Sunday video where my PCB holder, uh, this metal thing, it wouldn't hold the PCB in that direction because the spring's too tight. So I had a look online to see about some other PCB holders and there was this one and it was only 10 pounds. Now I'm not gonna take it out because I think it requires some assembly, but it's fairly cool looking, 10 quid as well. So this also has excellent reviews. So it comes in these parts here. Let's see if we can focus a little bit. There we go. It comes in, um, what is that? Five parts and a few screws um, and some instructions on the outside of the box. So that's pretty good. Um, and it'll hold your, bowl, hold your board. There's a little picture here, which I suppose is worth focusing on a little bit. So it'll hold your board in there. I'm not sure how stable that's gonna be, but I'll test it out so you guys know. Um, so don't run out and get one until you know whether it's uh, any good. But I just like the idea that it would hold a wider board and that it's adjustable. Um, and it could hold other things too. I don't think it's necessarily just for PCB use, even though it does say PCB holder. Um, Duratool, not known for the best quality. I mean, high quality, 100% long life. Great, um, but the thing is, I do own some other Dura Tool tools 
and they're actually okay. I've not had any fail, but I'm not using them for critical jobs. So um, we'll see how this goes. It's like too big to fit on the, the base of my thing here. Never mind. Uh, so there's that, which is an interesting one. And then um, I've got a couple here, actually. This one, I've never owned one of these before. I'm going to open it now, actually. We can probably see the, the packet. So I don't know if you can read it. It's very difficult to read, but it says posh, conductive plastics and rubber for static control and EMI shielding. And this is an anti-static wrist strap. Oh. Now, this was three pounds delivered from eBay, so I don't imagine it's going to be the super best quality. But we have a wrist strap here with a little metal back um, and it's elasticated and it goes to a little crocodile clip. Now, and it's got uh, just a little banana jack on the end. So if you wanted to, you could plug into your earth connection on your power supply or something like that. Um, I think that's how it works, isn't it? <laughs> Having never ever worried about static really. The only time I ever worried about static was when I was working on uh, my Commodore PET so I would constantly just go and touch the, the exposed metal part of the radiator to ground myself. Um, but I'm going to be playing with a scope soon, um, a new one I bought, and um, I want to get inside it and have a little look. So I want to just shield myself a little bit. In fact, um, I mean, this doesn't feel like great wire, but maybe we should just test and see if this actually is connected to that. Let's find out, shall we? I've got... Um, a multimeter here. So if I just press on there and flip that over. <laughs> it's not making a great connection. And it's making literally no connection over there. So that's connected to the back plane. <laughs> it's not connected at all. Brilliant. So that's hooked on and this is the back plane. Yep, I'm fairly sure that should be connected. It's not even a wire, is it? Oh my lord. Uh, hello, Future Dave here. I'm just going to jump in on the video here. Pretty sure there's no way I could edit this section in. so. Um, I had a little think about this just after I finished recording and slamming this thing and saying uh, how it was weird. Uh, well, I thought, actually, maybe my continuity test is not working or maybe I just need to measure the resistance between these two bits. Um, so let's plug it all in again and we'll do resistance as well because I don't want to not have these bases covered. Uh, so we've got uh, the UniT here, which they're all plugged in, aren't they? Oh, actually, it's in the wrong... It's in milliamps. Let's plug it in resistance. So that's my cable. Let's try this. So one there and one there. Aha. <laughs> so my multimeter didn't read the continuity because it didn't see that it was connected because it's like a mega ohm or something like that. So actually that seems okay. Uh, so ignore what else I say in the rest of this video because of that, because I was stupid and didn't check the resistance. So let's actually check uh, continuity with the UniT because I tested it with the v VC97. So let's just see if this one will read it, but I don't think it will. No, it's it, what it's seeing is um, the one mega ohm resistance. So it's not seeing continuity, uh, but there is a resistance between them, uh, which is important because uh, it doesn't, you don't want, I don't know, thousands of volts of static electricity discharging at high current. Uh, so it's going to discharge through this one meg uh, connection. So actually, it's fine. <laughs> How embarrassing. So that's the problem when you do these things on, like quickly on the fly, you don't really realize. So let's just check it with the other one as well, since it's here, we can do. So what do we see over here? Yeah, one mega ohm of resistance. That is okay. That's fine. What an idiot. Ugh. 
I'll try and cut out the bits where I'm a bit more of a fool, but I thought you might want to see that I will rectify my mistakes if I see them. Outrageous. Okay, well, I didn't expect that. I thought it would just work, but fair enough. Unless I've totally misunderstood what they're for. Um, okay, and next up, this one can hardly go wrong. Actually works really well with the mat here, doesn't it? Let's, um, let's focus in for this one. So this is some solder. Some new solder I've purchased. It's MG Chemicals. It is, uh, where are the numbers on there? Oh yeah, 6337. Um, and it's 0 0.025 diameter. Now that is thinner than my other solder. This is the uh, multi-core solder. So this is one I love to use, but it's really expensive. And this is the one that I came and found on Amazon for 16 pounds for, what is it, 500 grams? A pound, roughly 500 grams, I would say. This one's a lot heavier than that one. Um, and the solder is a little bit thinner. <laughs> it's not, not even that much thinner. It's uh, maybe a quarter thinner than this one. So um, it may be easier for SMD soldering, but I need to replace this roll anyway before it runs out. So this is the one I've got. So there's plenty of solder on here anyway. This, uh, this one's gonna last a long time. But I'll pop a link in the description. It's got some great reviews. I'll be testing it out um, in a future video, but I won't do one specifically for that because I've got nothing really to compare it to. Um, actually, I do. I could look at some cheap Chinese ones too. Look, so these, I'll just grab them. So these have been actually kind of useful. Um, these are the cheap Chinese ones that I picked up. Um, and I think this one was, um, was kindly donated to me. So I've tried out both of them. This one's absolute garbage, um, really, really bad. This one is really nice and thin, and actually it's been a bit of a boon to work with that on um, some SMD stuff. However, it is a little bit crap, so um, not the best. Um, so yeah, I would get rid of that. I'll tell you what, we'll do, we'll do a little soldering um, comparison of these on, some, on the back of some Vera board or something like that, and we'll try out these, these four things and we'll, we'll give it a go, shall we? I mean, that'll be... Fairly fun, won't it? Anyway, that's that. And then last of all, oh, I have to go and grab something first. Last of all, um, I've got to say a big thank you to um, Martin. Um, now, I don't know if Martin will want me to say his last name, partly because I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's Martin Sauerteig. That might be completely wrong. Martin, I'm sorry if it is, but he picked something up from my wish list and it's really, really cool. So this is, let's get it out of the box, out of the bag rather. It's incredibly generous for one. This is a 700 milliamp hour mini DC UPS. So that's an uninterruptible power supply. Um, originally sort of it's used for wireless routers to keep your internet going if the power goes out. In fact, there's a little diagram on the back that shows that. Um, and input voltage 11 to 13 volts, DC output voltage of five to 12 volts. And it's got a lithium ion battery in there. Now I like the five volts. That's what I'm super interested in. So on the top, we've got uh, a couple of jacks, input, output, and five volts. And then that seems to be about it. I'm not gonna get it out now because I'm really looking forward to playing it with another time. But uh, yeah, it's the Mini DC UPS GM312 and it's around 30 pounds, I think. Um, so it's very kind of him to get this for me. It comes with a power supply two, I think. So let's have a quick look. Uh, yeah, this is a 12 volt two amp power supply with a little, uh, what's that, five millimeter, 5.5 millimeter jack on the end. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to find out what this can do, whether it's, um, whether it has an interrupt in, I mean, it says uninterruptible, that's very true, but sometimes you get a bit of a wobble or, you know, it might only work with the 12 volts, but if it works with the five volts, then we've got a UPS for, um, an ESP8266 or, you know, whatever. I'm excited about it because I really wanted to build my own little UPS. And so I did some research on power path management and I looked at a few chips. Um, I even designed my own board. 
Uh, oh yeah, and I blew that chip up in a live stream, if anyone remembers. Uh, uh, yeah, design my own board with the USB flip the wrong way around, clever me. Uh, anyway, yeah, I want to do some investigation into that because I find that sort of technology is really interesting and yeah, it's cool. Anyway, Martin, thank you very much. Very, very kind. Uh, that is the end of today's post bag. 